Hello World Wide Web, this is Alex with a blender tutorial, possibly for beginners. It's an exercise in lighting and shading and just setting up a render. All right, so I kind of assume that it's your first time using Blender, one of your first times, and also that you're trying to do everything for free. So I use this site called Sketchfab, and I just search up models related to what I'm trying to work on, and I just go over to download the 3D model. It says the author must be credited, so thank you Drazen at Sketchfab for your awesome contribution to this platform. And I just download that OBJ. And then obviously that T-pose is way too stiff. So I'm just gonna unzip that and rename this file so I know where to go to. I'm calling it Galactic Lady. And I'm gonna take this model and plop it into this website called Mixamo. This is a totally free service. I think you're gonna be prompted to sign up to use it. But once you do, you have access to all these different animations and poses, totally for free. So you just import that model into the website. And then the next step is just to set up the skeleton or armature. And that's what enables it to have all these different poses and animations. All right, so it's loaded up there. We don't want that stiff T pose. We want something more alive. So let's set it up. And then the automatic settings should be good enough. All right, great, so that works. And we're just gonna turn her around. And I went for something idle. I didn't want too much movement. I just wanted it to be a little more relaxed. All right, so I'm gonna download this as an FBX. The default settings, again, are good enough. You don't have to worry about much of anything. I changed the frames per second because I was thinking it would be a smaller file size, but I'm not really sure about that. It doesn't really matter. Just move forward by downloading that. And then this is what we're going to transfer over to Blender. Blender is an awesome, awesome, awesome program, and I recommend it highly. So we're just going to get rid of that default cube. We do not need that. And we're going to import our FBX model. So just go over to import and scroll down to FBX. And then go back to wherever you have that saved. Mine's just in the downloads folder. And I thought there was a problem here, but it just took me a while to figure out that the model was imported. It was just super, super small. So I press S after selecting it and I just expanded it and made it bigger. And then it came with this weird stuff. That's just the armature. So you want to click on that eye and then also the camera next to it so that it doesn't pop up again when you render it out. So here I did a vertical split by right clicking. And this is so I can still move everything around but also see what it would look like with the camera. So by pressing shift A, I can scroll down and add a camera and then go over to the camera settings and play around with that a bit. So just play with those options and see what they do for you. So in order to change the shape of the capture, we toggle the resolution. So I just did 1920 by 1920 because I like to upload these to Instagram and they like squares on Instagram. And then to move a little bit closer or farther away, I play with the focal length. So that's something you can do too. Whatever your preference is, you don't have to do what I'm doing, obviously. Something I really like to do is go down to the viewport display and change that value so that everything else is black and I get to just focus on what's being captured. And then we're going to play around with the composition guides. I like to do that to see if there's balance, whether things are even, it just gives me an idea of what it's going to look like. And at this point, I just wanted to save because I didn't want everything to be lost because sometimes this program can crash and you don't want to lose all your progress. So make sure to save. And now we're going over to the shader editor. This is how we add materials to the figure and its environment. So 
I'm going over to the world actually because I want to set up the lighting so we can actually see the material on the figure. So here I'm adding an image texture. So you can usually uh, you can use any picture that you have on your computer and that will be its environment. So I'm just playing around with this iridescent material to try something a bit brighter and see how that works. But I go through this several times because I'm just playing around and seeing what everything does. And then I went over to the object and I added a new material. And a really important value here for this look is the metallic value. So I play with that a lot. And in order to see the effect, I'm going over to viewport shading and the rendered view. And then I go to shift A and I add a point light. Lighting is really important for creating a certain look. And so I just go over to that in the light properties and I play around with the color. I really love purple, so I tend to choose purple. And then I like to choose a complementing color, maybe something a bit different. And you can choose whichever color you like. It's really just about having fun and experimenting and see what comes out. So then I chose blue here, and you can also see the power is very low. That has a huge impact on how everything starts to look. Later in the video, I start to use a higher value and that actually produced the look I was more so going for. And I found that first light that came with the scene and I'm just dragging that down. So I'm just playing around with the three lights. I still want to adjust the metallic value um, and then also play with the roughness. So the higher the roughness, the more like cloth it is. And the less rough it is, the more kind of like glass it is. And I wasn't liking the background. I'm not sure why it came out that way. So I went to my HDR folder. So there's a website called Polyhaven where you can download all sorts of textures and HDRIs, which are basically like 360 captures of an environment. And so you just load that in and it's like your figure is actually at that place. And here I have the node wrangler enabled and so I press control T while having the image texture node selected but you can totally ignore that because I end up scrapping it anyway and ignore that too the principal volume we don't need that right now what I wanted to do is just to make the background black and I know there's another way to do this but this is the way that I went with and I just drag over that black value to make the environment more dark so we can really focus on that light. It really pops now. And just adjust the lights as much as you want. This is the fun part. This is the experimentation phase. All the hard work is done already. And at this point, I opted to go to the modifier panel and add a subdivision surface. So that adds more geometry to the figure. And I noticed that with some models that really changes drastically the way that the light interacts with the figure. With this one, I didn't see much of a difference, so you can totally leave this out, but maybe you chose a different figure and so this could be really effective for you. So just try it. If it doesn't work, you can scrap it out. And I went back to the render properties to play with ambient occlusion. That didn't do much. So I selected bloom and that's exactly what I like. I use that a lot in my work. And I love to play around with, with the different colors and just see what comes out. And then I'm just going back to the lights again and moving them around. And then I start to move around the camera a bit too and just figure out a different direction. So back in the renders properties panel, go down to color management and then go to look and see how you feel about the contrast. 
I tend to opt for high contrast or very high contrast in a lot of the images I produce. And then in the output properties, we're focused on the render region because we just want to render out what the camera is focusing on. And then we're going to set up a destination for our file. So make sure to set that up. And then choose the file format. You can do a PNG, which is a high quality image, or JPEG, which is still pretty good, um, but the file size is a lot smaller, so I find that's a lot easier for me, depending on what I'm doing. And then we're gonna go up to render and render out that image. And this is what we're working with, the first output. And now we're able to go over to compositing, we enable use nodes, and then we get to add one of my favorite nodes, Shift A and search up glare. So here we're able to do streaks, ghosts, fog glow, and simple star. And I basically just use all of them. And I play around with all these different values. Here I just went back to the world settings and I changed the image to one of outer space. I just wanted something darker, so I decreased the strength of the environment, um, which is totally optional. I think the black worked, it's fine. What else I tried doing was increasing the power of the lights to see what kind of effect that would produce, and I ended up liking it a lot. So that's something important to do is not commit to something early on, just keep experimenting. And I also tried different angles to see what that would do. And so this is me just playing around and having a good time. And then rendering that out with the different compositing options. And also without. I ended up liking it just the way it was, without the glare. But obviously there's a million different combinations. There's so many different possibilities. So yeah, keep experimenting, keep trying different ways of looking at something. And you don't wanna just set it up and then that's it. Like you really wanna milk it, just really go for it and produce something totally new each time. And yep, that's it. So I hope you found this helpful. Let me know. Comment, subscribe, baby. Okay, bye.